So one of the things you're for sure going to see on the GED is slope application problems. So here we have um, a pretty typical problem. Let's take a look. When Jack mows seven lawns, he earns $140. So for seven lawns, we're getting 140 bucks. And when he mows three lawns, he earns $60. Now, if you were to graph Jack's earnings, what would be the slope of the graph? If you were to graph Jack's earnings, what would be the slope of the graph? Now, you could uh, literally um, graph the earnings if you wanted to and figure out the slope, but we actually don't have to uh, because whether you realize it or not, you've actually been given points. A lot of people don't recognize this information we've been given as points, but if you think about it, a point consists of two values. An input value or uh, often called the x value, but remember that the x is an input or independent uh, variable. It's the thing you start with. And then a y value, um, which is an output or dependent variable, the thing you end up with, uh, the consequence. And so basically what we have here is a dude who mows lawns for money. So the input variable is gonna be the number of m lawns he mows. So in the first case, when he mows seven lawns, and then the other, ver the output variable is going to be the one that depends on that. His earnings depend on how many lawns he mows. He makes 140 bucks when he mows seven lawns. We'll get another point. When he mows three lawns, uh, he makes $60. And so we see another point. And so we have two points here. And it's easy to find the slope of a graph when given points. We've been talking about that. The way to find the slope of a graph when given points is to bust out the slope formula. And don't worry, you don't have to have this memorized. It is on your GED formula sheet. And you'll see that the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1, that means the second y minus the first y, over x2 minus x1, the second x minus the first x. That's all subscript means. It's not a math operation. You have to do these little numbers down here, subscript. They just mean like first or second. So I'm looking for my second y value. So this was my first point, and this was my second point. It actually doesn't matter which one you call one and two. It just matters that you're consistent. So I think I'll actually call this my second point. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I am looking into the future and seeing that if I do it the other way around, I'm going to end up with negative values. Uh, and I don't want negative values. I wanted my larger numbers to come first. So that's why I chose to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So the second Y then would be this Y that's on point two, 140. And see how Y2 just went away. I replaced it with the second Y. And from that, I'm going to minus, minus the first Y. And the first Y we had is the Y from point 1. So here's my Y value from point 1, 60. So it'll be 140 over, or minus 60 all over. And I'm going to do my second X, and I'm going to remember to stay consistent. I called this point 2, so this will be my second X, 7. And from that, I'm going to minus my point 1, 3. And now I just need to simplify this according to the order of operations. Remember that the order of operations asks you to do groupings first. Well, tops and bottoms of fractions make groupings. So I'm going to do this subtraction up here and the subtraction down there. 140 minus 60 is 80. And 7 minus 3 is 4. And now for my final step, I'm going to simplify this. 80 divides perfectly by 4. Remember, one way to think about a fraction bar is an act of division. So since that divides perfectly, I'm just going to go ahead and do that division. 80 divided by 4 is 20, and so this, um, slo this graph would have a slope of $20 per lawn. He's making $20 per lawn. Remember, slope is your rate of change. How much is this man's bank account changing? It's changing $20 with every lawn he mows. $20 or $20 per line, lawn.